Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 3 of the chapter The Solid State. In this video, I am going to tell you about crystal lattices and unit cells. Imagine when you have to make a building, what do you need? You need bricks and these bricks are arranged in a certain way and when you arrange these bricks in a certain way and expand that arrangement in three dimensions you get a building or a structure that you are building like the lego blocks that you had when you played with as kids you join them in certain patterns and you get different structures in the same way when you have crystalline substances the crystal in the crystalline substances these bricks or the uh, minimum structure in chemistry is known as a unit cell and when you expand this unit cell in three dimensions you get a structure a pattern that pattern is known as the crystal lattice and the crystal lattice when you when it follows a certain pattern that particular substance exists in the form of a crystal which has a definite specific shape specific faces and that is why you have diamonds which have a specific cut they have a specific surf they have specific surfaces so that is the reason why crystalline substances have got definite structures just as your arrangement of bricks in a certain way will make a building of one type and if you had arranged the bricks in a different way you would get a building of a different kind now you could imagine the lattice to be somewhat like the rubik's cube these are little cubes you know and the little cubes have been all joined together when you join these little cubes each of these little cubes is a is a unit cell and the unit cell when you expand it in two dimensions you get this one surface with nine unit cells and then when you expand it in three dimensions you get this giant cube a bigger cube and the cube is nothing but the expansion of the same structure in all directions which gives since the cube is a very symmetrical structure what you get as a result of it is also a symmetrical cube on the other hand if the cube was the unit cell the cube was not a cube it was let us say a cuboid like this shoebox if it was cuboidal then the shape of the if you had these as bricks then the arrangement how would you do the arrangement this way this way and how are you arranging the next brick this way or are you fixing it this way so how you arrange the unit cells in what pattern do you repeat it that would make the crystal lattice and that is why based on the kind of unit cell that you have you would get different kinds of crystal lattices which would then cause different structures of different kinds of crystals so that is the reason why different crystals have different shapes they have different they look different their colors are different of course that is due to their chemical properties but the structures are different because of the difference in the pattern and the difference in the original unit the brick itself the brick could be a cube the brick could be a cuboid the brick could be a cuboid with tilted edges instead of all being 90 degrees it could be slightly tilted so how the unit cell is there are different types of unit cells and then these unit cells how are they arranged in three dimensions to create different types of lattices now the scientist who uh, described these lattices or these there are 14 types of lattices and they are known as the brevet lattices and brevet was the scientist uh, after whom these lattices have been named and there are 14 types of Brevet lattices which are created on the basis of the arrangement of these unit cells so let us now understand the unit cells and the uh, lattices better a regular three-dimensional arrangement of points in space that is known as a crystal lattice what are the characteristics of the Brevet lattices each point in the unit cell or in the lattice rather each point in the lattice if you see each corner of each cube each corner of each cube actually represents an atom each corner we call them the lattice points so each point is a lattice site or a lattice point 
What does the lattice point mean? That whatever is the constituent particle which is making that crystal, it could be an atom, it could be an ion, it could be a molecule, whatever is the whatever is the basic structure molecular structure or atomic structure which is which on repeating will give you first the unit cell and then the lattice that unit is one corner of the cube and these points are known as the lattice points or the lattice sites i'll just give you an example you can imagine as i told you that a cube is would be the simplest kind of um, kind of unit cell and let me imagine that I have this set of balls, okay? The table tennis balls. And I'm placing them one over the other. When I place them like this, one over the other, can you notice you're getting cubes? You, you will see four here and four here. And if you look here, you'll see these four may, will make one cube because there are four behind it and four in front, four white, four orange. Similarly, four orange and four white are in the back. So they are making a cube. These are making cubes, if you see. And then when you expand the structure, it results in the formation of a lattice. So how does it expand? Let me start expanding it now. So let me imagine that now, since I have these two, now I have a third layer over it. There, ball over ball and a fourth layer over it and now it is like placing the bricks and the fifth layer over it do you notice you will be able to see the squares very clearly the unit cells the squares and if you see the squares are being repeated in all directions resulting in that crystal lattice so the unit cell actually is not a cube it is only these balls the constituent particles and the cube is imaginary the lines are imaginary the lines are only drawn to give us an idea what the basic structure is while in actuality you only have the uh, the particles that is the constituent particles which are present in a certain pattern which gives you an idea of what the unit cell may be and then the unit cell expands and it gives you the entire crystal lattice and I told you there are different kinds of lattices that are produced due to unit cells and I'll just show you how so do you see here you have cubes now let us imagine that this arrangement changes instead of the balls falling one over the other they are falling in the grooves now if you see you'll be able to notice that instead of the uh, the squares you will see hexagons if this is the central ball one two three four five six it has six balls around it in a hexagon if this is the central ball it has one two three i mean you could see the hexagons yourself i'll just bring it closer do you see the orange ball here you would be able to see the hexagon around it take this orange ball here see the hexagon around it take the white ball you'll be able to see the hexagon around it so you'd be able to see this hexagonal arrangement and the same if you look here if you look here the patterns the pattern is different all you did was just use a different unit cell and expand it in three dimensions to get a different kind of a lattice so God is very creative and very artistic. So what did he do? He created a certain number of unit cells originally. And as, they, uh, as we changed the lattice points, which ones were occupied, which ones were empty, he could choose which lattice points does he want occupied, which does he want empty, does he want to stuff something in between the lattice points. And that would give rise to a different kind of a lattice. So all crystals that are known to us can be described in terms of 14 Brevet lattices. And that is why they're known as Brevet because he guessed all the structures that were possible with these unit cells. So now you understand, I'll be doing all of this in details. This is just an idea for you to understand what a unit cell is and how on repeating a pattern you get a lattice. 
So each point is a lattice site in the, in the lattice. Now I've made only unit cells, I've not made the whole lattice. That is, as now you understand what the lattice is, the entire three-dimensional arrangement. Each point represents a particle, which may be an atom, molecule, or, a, or an ion. And the lines joining the lattice points, they only bring out the geometry. If the lines are forming a cube of the particles, if they're forming a cube, it's a cubic arrangement. If it's like a cuboid, it's a cuboidal arrangement. So the lines are only for, to make the geometry of the unit cell clear to us. In, uh, in reality, these lines do not exist in the crystals. These lines are just imaginary lines joining the lattice sites to may bring out the geometry of the unit cell. Now, if you take a unit cell, how do you describe? In order to study these unit cells, you would use the cube or cuboid, whatever it is, and you would have to describe its length, its breadth, and its height. If I have a cube and I have to explain, describe it to you, what will I tell you? Um, how can I describe a cube without showing it to you? It is an object which has, uh, whose uh, length is, let us say, two, uh, two inches, uh, breadth is also two inches, and height is also two inches, and uh, the angles between uh, the, um, let's say, the length, breadth, and height are A, B, and C. Then the angles are alpha, beta, and gamma, and each of the angles is also 90 degrees. Then you can imagine what the structure would be like. So that is what is done. If you have, let us say, I take this cuboid and just like this. And let me take off the lid here. Now, now, can you see? Imagine this to be the structure that you are seeing, an open box. This, this edge, this one, is A. The horizontal length here is B. And the height here is C. So A, B and C and all three of them measured are have different measurements. I'm showing this to you to explain that unit cells may not always be cubes. They, these three dimensions could be different. And then if this is A, this is B and this is C, then the angle between A and B is known as gamma. The angle between A and B is gamma. The angle between B and C, this one, is alpha and the angle between A and C on this side that is beta. So you use four of these parameters, sorry, six of these parameters to explain the structure of the unit cell. What are the parameters which tell you the, uh, the structure of the unit cell? The edges, that is the, uh, the line, the edges of the cube or cuboid, whatever it is, the A, B and C edges and the three angles that is alpha, beta and gamma. And all three of these would tell you the actual structure of the, the basic structure of the unit cell. Now unit cells may further be of different kinds. How are they of different kinds now? You have primitive unit cells and you have centered unit cells. A primitive unit cell is a simple cube or a cuboid or whatever it is. It is the simple basic structure, right? A primitive unit cell is one, uh, let me show it to you from here, that it is, it just has, it gives you all the alpha, beta, gamma and all the particles they are present or the constituent particles, they occupy the lattice sites, the corners. So how many, how many, uh, constituent particles would you see here on this cuboid you'll see one on each corner and how many corners do we have we have four in the back and four in the front so we have eight corners in a cuboid so or a cube so you will have eight lattice points all of them occupied such a cell is known as a primitive unit cell a unit cell in which the particles are only present on the corner positions is known as a primitive primitive is the basic kind, the rudimentary, the first. So that would be a primitive unit cell. Then come a little twists there. That much was not enough. Now God wanted a little creativity, a little art. So how did he bring the art about? He said, let us have a little change, a little difference in the arrangements. So how would we have the arrangements? There are three types of centered unit cells. The first is 
the body centered the body now this is the body of the cuboid the entire box is the body so body center in the center of the body let us now imagine i have this wall here all the corners are occupied by the walls and now in the center of the body you have one ball in the middle and the box in the middle it is stuck here imagine that i could somehow hang this here and then close the box so this unit cell if you replicate it if you multiply i mean just expand this unit cell in all directions you will get a lattice which is due to the body centered cubic unit cell right so what is a body centered unit cell a body centered unit cell is one in which all the lattice all the corners are occupied and there is one uh, particle the constituent particle which could be uh, an atom it could be a molecule or an ion whatever is the constituent particle of the crystal is present in the center of the unit cell in the middle of imagine something in the middle of this room that would be a body centered unit cell the other type of centered unit cells is face centered now how many how many faces does a cube or a cuboid have how many faces does this have face means surface how many surfaces does this have one in the front one in the back two three one on one side one on the other side four one here now this one i could have kept it like this only so one two three four five six there are six faces right so if there are six faces a face centered unit cell would be where all the eight corners have got the uh, have got the constituent particles the atoms and the each face the center of each face also has a particle so in every wall in the middle of every wall there is one particle not in the center of the body you don't have to open split open the uh, unit cell actually there are, there are no walls but these are again if the lines were imaginary the walls are also imaginary so you have the lattice points all occupied in the corners and if you imagine these four lines to be making one surface then in the middle of that surface you have one particle one particle one particle in the middle of each face so we say it is a face centered unit cell it is these are the now if it is a cube then it's a face centered cubic but these details we'll go into later let us just understand this what centered unit cells are it's a face centered unit cell and the next is the end centered end centered is where only two ends ends if you if i imagine that there is you are hanging this box with a uh, with a rope and the rope passes through this so if it passes through this you have the rope entering here and coming out here so two ends the opposite ends they have constituent particles the top and the bottom or it could be the front and the back or it could be this side and that side it could form three types of end centered but actually it could be it, it means end centered means there are two uh, the usual lattice points are occupied and there are two faces opposite faces which have a um, constituent particle in the center of two opposite faces so that makes an end centered unit cell so this was about the unit cells and the crystal lattice and we will go ahead with our study of the solid state and about these crystal lattices and unit cells in our next video i'll be telling you about the different kinds of primitive unit cells that are possible in the next video so if you found this helpful give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry thank you and bye bye for now